Let's learn how to build this uh, coffee table using Modo and render it within Modo. Here we'll download from the internet um, a wood texture. So we can actually start by doing this. So I, when I usually download texture, I type uh, wood or wooden texture maps um, like this. The best is to take a photo yourself, but just to, and this is the one I, I used. So in the tutorial, just grab this one and we'll have the same thing. So I put it on my desktop here. So now we can go in Modo. Let me close this. And the way I would start this, um, it's actually uh, very simple. We can use Cube. We can. Uh, draw it flat first, it doesn't really matter. So if I start with a cube, I can hold control and then it's uh, a, if you hold control, it'll be equal on each side. Voilà. So here I just drew a polygon. It might be tiny, but it's a polygon as you can tell. Oh, sorry, it's a cube. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, I don't want to confuse you, so let me redo it. I think for this exercise, right-click cube will be actually faster. Um, now, the next one here, I can do N to create a new layer, and I can use this one now. And I can just draw this, like this, just to show you a different way, and go move it here. And for the depth, you can also enter the measurement here. But for the depth, we can just move it down like this. And I still think it's too thick. Voila. Q. Uh, it's actually my cube was way too thick. So I'll go R. Voila. Something like this. Because I scale it, I want to go freeze, scale, and uh, then we can do the other cube. So I can go here, do a new layer, N, empty layer, grab the cube tool, and I can just do it like this. Actually, I'm not quite sure what this one is, so what I'll do, I'll stick to this and we'll do it afterward. Um, here the trick is to do the wood first. So when I copy it, the wood is clean. Instead of copying it, and then I have to do four times the wood. So for this one, as we know, um, we're gonna call it M, black, BL. Make it dark, we've done this before. Now here is the amount of reflection. 4 is pretty high, so I'll go to 2 and the perpendicular reflection, I tune it down to 60 right away, so it's not too reflective. You see the shininess? Uh, right away also, I'll give it some rounded edges, so I'll go, I'm not sure here, maybe 3, 4 mil, like this. Here I'll do the same, I'll go M, I'll call it wood, um, we don't really need a color because we'll use, I'm going to put it back to gray, but we'll use uh, an image. And I'll say OK. So now we have the wood. We can do the same here. Go 4 mil to get the rounding. To uh, here I'll go 60% to. Now to bring the wood here, we'll go add image load image. The wood is here, double click, and now we can see the wood has been brought up. Now by default the wood is using UV, and this is a, a way of projecting the wood, it's correct. The only bad thing here is that it's stretch and it's the wrong way. So without going too deep into UV, so UV it's like almost you take the cube, you unfold it, and you decide each way uh, how to uh, lay out the texture. So each object in Modo has a UV, so we can see the cube here unfolded. 
for something like this the easiest way is to go project and use atlas it's an algorithm that understand that this is longer than this you see so it unfolded for you and you press Q now if you want to see more or less it's really easy you go here you sorry you select your object go in polygon and you see it shows you which one it is so you could move it and if you want to see less wood you go R and you scale it in and then the wood will be bigger or the other way and it repeats the texture every time so now the two sides doesn't have the same uh, but the main uh, worry I have here is that uh, it's not going the right way so I go E for rotate and now it's correct but this is the other side of the cube so I'll select this one go E and you see now I'm good I'll uh, scale it a little bit E again and move it back voila we could also scale it only one way if we want more wood into it but I think this is alright okay and we could do the same with those ones but I don't think they are too bad those ones so now I go back to model and now I can duplicate this cube so it'll be right um, we could just duplicate and rotate or we can try something uh, called array radial so I think we need three copy if I'm not mistaken the center should be here maybe four sorry and voila this is actually the first time I do this but for once it worked um, and here we can select this one or draw a new one and uh, just for speed I'll duplicate this one and put it here R yeah I'm really eyeball eyeballing it So something like this and we can do the exact same one uh, radial array click at the center here it didn't work you know why because of this I think if you go freeze all it should give us a better result array radial center should be here voila then we can add a plane okay uh, here is a little trick that we can do we could actually merge those four cubes or five sorry so they are here we can right click and merge them so they become one layer and uh, we can go in edges this is new we can select the edge that we want I'm holding shift huh? and we can do a chamfer and to do a chamfer it's the bevel again but you don't put any um, subdivision so you go B you click and drag you see and you just don't put any uh, if you put some number here it'll be rounded it's hard to see but you'll get many lines but if you put zero you'll get a chamfer so this is a bit too much we'll go maybe 12 voila and that will bounce the light quite well and as you know we can get this light right click change it change type to an area light if you don't see the light you have to go here show light here I can actually see it remove the uh, edges mode and then we can have a, a light maybe from the side E rotate it like this 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 maybe a bit higher and further away so let's try that 
so F8 like that you want this to match that, I think it is already and um, if you want to see exactly the power of this uh, of this light you can just turn it off Look. you can see exactly what it does and sometimes to get better highlight, better lighting uh, I would replace the environment gray so this one with um, a more powerful image. So I would go F6, we call that an environment lighting. And I would go maybe indoor and uh, I don't know, maybe one of those. Double click and now it brings it here. And you'll get a stronger reflection. So this one might not be the right one. You see the wood already looks better actually. Um, let me try this one. This is really useful when you use glass or metal. Here it'll help but it won't do a massive difference. Um, and usually I tune it down. So I go here and I'll go point, uh, 0.65 or 7. So we, we get the indirect but not as much. See that's actually better here. Um, the noise will be gone when we do rendering, the final render. Uh, if you want to rotate the image because you want to see a window here or things like this you go here texture locator and you rotate maybe 30 on wire 60 and you see now I'm getting backlighting so sometimes I tweak this too so actually zero was pretty good here for final for first of all if you want a vignette I would go when I do jewelry I go 400 percent but here maybe a hundred just to darken a little bit. So vignette is here. I'll go 100 or 150. Look, now it's a bit darker here. Uh, I would remove a little bit of the saturation. So the tone mapping is, uh, where's the tone mapping here? 20, 10 or 20 here. And if there was something shiny, I would use bloom. But there's not really anything shiny here. We can still try it. And then finally, I would, um, if I'm doing a final, final render, I would go on the render settings, put point 0.2, that's to remove noise. The reflection will be here, it will be 256, so we'll put more samples. If you were to use glass, you would do the same here. Uh, actually, I'll make the center cube, it might be ugly glass to show you and the sample for the shadow same thing 256 so now it'll take longer but it'll look better so you can also texture just polygon so you can double click go m and get this one called glass so now this one will have its own uh, and to make it glass we know how to do this we go here here sorry make it 95 we make the refraction 1.4 we make the we can give it a hair of a yellow or blue and we can play with the absorption maybe 120 mil see what it does something like this still think it's a bit dark so I'll go back to my light and I can push it a little bit, so maybe 3.5, that's the intensity of the light. So it's a bit brighter, and maybe the environment too. So I'm going fast, but we'll do this again and again. Uh, not this one, this one. Maybe we'll go 0.75, or even 0.8. Voila. So I'm pretty much done. Q, remove this. Uh, if you want to save it, you go File, Save As, and give it a name. Uh, I was using my Dropbox, so I think it was called Model Shelf, Model Coffee Table. But now, because we have a wooden texture, Model Coffee Table we need to save the texture and to do this you save the scene 
and then you go file consolidate scene and this will bring the wood within the scene it would create uh, imported material so now we can go render f9 and then I'll show you Photoshop so that's gonna take a while so here it is completed the noise here that you see I think it's due to the HDR it must be an old one and also the I use 256 for reflection I think 512 or more uh, sometimes I go 1000 2000 I've been up to 8000 with that um, help but uh, it's not too bad so just to show you the bloom I don't think here it'll do much uh, the way it works, it's for glowing. You go down. So if I go to 50, uh, actually we don't see much because there's no high contrast here. So this is not a great example. You see here the bloom, the glow, but this is not the type of image I, th I think where you would use bloom. It'll help her here. Let's turn it off. So the only thing I used was vignette to darken the edges and tone map to reduce a bit the saturation. When you go save, if you save as a PNG, you get the background on a layer and the shadow on a layer. In my case, I'll just use a JPEG and I'll call it uh, coffee table. I think I'm at six now. Doesn't really matter. Four, four. Voila, so now it's saved. Uh, I'll just save again, just think, no, it's good. And usually after a render, I would go in Photoshop. And here I'm going to show some trick. Uh, those tricks are valid for renders, but they are also valid for photo. You could, uh, this is some old family photo, you could actually use this even on old photo like this. Um, so if you talk to someone who knows color and Photoshop well, I'm cutting a lot of corner here so people might make fun of my technique because most people will use a, a separate layer to control the levels the cur the curves is a very good one but here I'm just going to show you some automatic tricks that can help you a lot for color correcting I don't use all of them at once rarely but I'll show you all of them and you know you still have to look with your eyes so those three are excellent Sometimes I only use two, sometimes I use the three. Uh, I don't use layers, so what I'll do, I'll fade with this one. So usually the first thing I'll do, I'll go Control L to do a level. And I won't work with RGB. I'll work red, uh, G, uh, red, green, and blue. So here we have a little bit of data, so it's more where you have no information. So we're going to clip it to there. And this on photos, even if you have an expensive DSLR, it would make a big difference. Okay? Uh, this one is the, um, the contrast. I don't really touch this one. So here it's a bit too strong, so I'll go back and I'll fade level the other way. You see? So none, a little bit. Here we just need like 10, 15, just a little bit. Next one, Autotone. It's a great little algorithm. It's pretty shady for underwater to get back all of the tone. And here it really depends on the image. I go between 10 and 30. Autocolor, if it helps, here it helps a lot. But it's way too strong. Uh, you see none with. But it does bring some of that warmth. And you could do all of this on mask and, you know, use a brush to put the yellow only here and not there. Um, what else do I use? Uh, often uh, CG images, they have too much saturation. So I'll go Vibrance and I'll remove, you know, minus four, minus five. If I do this, I'll put the same amount but in positive on Vibrance. And one that I don't use often, sometimes when you have dark corner here, I don't really have anything dark but uh, I would use um, this one shadow highlight it's a great one you see and then I would go back and just use a hair of it like sometimes I just six eight and it would show some of the detail here voila
that's it.